What's up you guys? It's your boy Jay Freshman back with another tutorial. This time I'm going to be talking about how to use Reverb 2 in FL Studio. And this could apply to any DAW because um, the concept is still the same. Remember, it's all about context, man. I'm going to keep saying this in like all the tutorials that I do because if you learn how to mix with context, then you won't just be doing things just to do it. You know, you will have a real understanding. But anyways, so let's start off with the clap. Um, go to Fruity Reverb 2. And let's go over the parameters. Hopefully I can make this bigger. Okay. Well, it's good enough. You can still see it. Let's start from left to right. So you have your mid and side um, knob. So for those that don't know about like mid, side, EQ, and all that stuff, this may sound um, maybe a bit complicated, but let me see if I could just simplify it in an easy way. So mid is just think of in the sense of hearing it in mono. I know um, you could correct me if I'm wrong, but from my understanding, you know, mid is dealing with the center frequencies and side is dealing with the side frequencies. And the best way I could sh like demonstrate the best way I could demonstrate that is, let me play this melody. So I have a thing called Q. So look how it switches from the side and mid. So here the side. Here the mid. So you hear like the mids is more focused on the center and the sides is more focused on the sides. So usually when um, we're putting on this reverb too and you're not really looking at that knob, you're really only focusing on the mid instead of the sides. And usually that's most of the cases. Um, but like I said, if you understand context, this is how you could become an advanced producer because now you could be doing stuff that people haven't yet tried because they didn't understand. And you know, reverb is all about recreating an environment, point blank. So like I said, with side, um, you could pretty much, yeah, this could just make it just sound a lot different. And oh, remember, the main thing is Enable to do side, it has to be a um, stereo signal going in. It can't be a mono signal going in. Like this clap, if we check, it's, um, hold on. Let me mute everything else. This clap is mono. So if I go, let's hear um, the reverb of the clap. If I switch it to side, it's not, nothing's gonna happen because there's no stereo activity. So enable, if you wanted to do the sides, there has to be some kind of stereo. Anyways, moving on, high cut. Pretty much, think of it, the more you go to the right, the more you open up the um, more of the frequencies because the high cut is cutting out the highs, you know, <laughs> high cut. So when it's this low, that means it's cutting out a lot. When it's all the way up, that means it's not cutting any of the highs. So let's just hear that. See, no highs when it's all the way down. And then you hear the highs. More highs. Now let's think about low cut. It's pretty much um, the opposite of that. So the more you go up, you're cutting out the lows. It's just like looking at a parametric. Boom. Boom. That's what it's pretty much doing with the low and the highs cuts. So. Everything is about context. Like you can have some of your lows in and you can have none, none of the lows. And a good way to 
and this ties with your um, pre-delay now right here, in a sense, because I know most people like to just cut out the lows, but you don't necessarily have to do that all the time. What you could do is bring up the pre-delay. The pre-delay is when the reverb comes in milliseconds after the initial hit. So then you can still have your low end. So let's hear it. Let me just exaggerate it. See? And then it moves out the way so we can even have all the lows. Let's see how that sounds. That way you can still maintain the lows. Um, moving on to the size. Well, before we move on, because um, this is all in milliseconds, you can also sync it to the tempo. In FL Studio 11 or 12, it's like, it's right under the word delay, like it's really small. But in FL20, they made it clear. <laughs> um, so it's kind of like delay in a sense. I mean, it is delay. So you could put it, this goes by the steps, the four steps or the eight steps, just like how you see in your channel rack. Same thing. So when you hear it. So it's more, you know, systematic and, you know, you could have your creativity to that as well. Moving on to the room, as you can see, big room, small room, and they all sound different. So let's just, let me bring this back down, bring some highs. That's a very small room. Very small room with a lot of walls. Which goes on to the diffusion um, knob. This is all about how many walls, you know. Triangle, square, going into a circle. The more you go up, the smoother the reverb is. Because if you hear it like this, you're going to hear like a ringing noise. You hear that? Boom. Is it smoothing out the reverb? But doesn't mean this is wrong. You know, like I said, it's all about context. That could be sick and something. Trust me. And this is how you become an advanced producer. And this is how you really shine. Like, a lot of people think it's you really shine and be unique when it comes to making a beat. But for me, I feel like you you really shine when it comes to mixing. Because... We could all use the same sounds and all this shit, and then it's really hard to differentiate um, from other producers. But if you know how to mix, tch, game over, yo. That's why if I was to be a beginner in mixing, I would tell every um, beginners to just jump into mixing right away. Jump into mixing and mastering. Learn how to be an engineer right away. I promise you. Tch. Modulation. You know, just modulating the reverb, simple. Speed as well. And they just added the um, mod and speed, I believe. I don't think that was in the other ones. And okay, going on to the bass response. So, pretty much. Yeah, you have your low end, um, your low cut, but what the bass response does, it sustains it. Like, let me see if you could be able to hear it. So, just think of the bass multi. It's called a bass multiplier. Just think of it. Um, it's just sustaining the bass, like it's a decay of for the bass, pretty much. Like, how long is the bass response going to last? So you could die on fast. Or it could last long. And that is the same or the opposite with the damping. Damping does it to the high frequency. So let's hear it with the highs. C. 
see here more of the high sustained or die out. The cross meter is um, directly related to the bass, just showing you at what point um, and everything under the frequency. You can check in the left corner. Right now we're at um, 800, so it's going to pretty much be the response of all the low frequencies below 870. And then you have your decay. Obviously, the tell of your reverb, how long it lasts. Boom. Short decay, you know. And then you have your dry signal. So you only really want your dry signal all the way down when you create a send. And I'll probably make a video about sends later. And then you have your early, reflect, early reflection knob, which is kind of think about it as width. You know, left and right, up and down type shit. And then your wet of obviously the mix of how much reverb you want to hear. And then last but not least, the stereo knob. So you can make your reverb mono if you put it all the way to the right or all the way to the left stereo. So Next time when you um about to put reverbs on anything of your instruments, you think about just recreating the space. And I promise you, when you have that kind of mindset, then now you're really understanding mixing. Now you're really understanding, okay, um, to not make shit muddy, I could put the reverb in mono at one at some parts. Because I might have a lot of sounds that are already taken over, you know, the left and right. And, you know, everything is just context. I'm going to just keep going back to that. But this is a brief understanding of rever um, reverb. And we could play with the track. Let's try to just get a flavor going. Let's say we wanted to hear more highs. Or let put up the decay. Boom. You hear all them highs from the dampen. We can cut it back. And shit, that sounds like cool, G. Like with the damping. As far as the damping, I'm talking about. That sounds cool when the highs is not being sustained. It's being cut off very quickly. Like, see? I just... People will be like, how the fuck did he do that sound? But like I said, if you understand your functionalities, you'll be able to translate all the ideas in your head. So here you go for a reverb video. Let me know if you like. Comment below um, any other reverb techniques that you like to do or what's your favorite reverb. Reverb 2 is good. Like You just really need to have the understanding of it and everything is good. And like I said, you can always press F1, and it brings it to, if you're on reverb, it's going to bring it up to the manual of it. Always check out the manual, man. I'm telling you, everything, like, all you beginning producers that is asking so many questions, everything is really right in front of your face. You just got to be willing to search for it. But it's right in front of your face. So... Have a nice day, you guys.